but many of the indian guys they never bother to do it because for them they have to make a quick 5 to 10 minutes video about the bike uh, because if you don't do it immediately and if you don't talk about whether it's capable of doing everything then the youtube algorithm will not be favoring them hello ladies and gentlemen boys and girls welcome back to creator on wheels i am shiv and hope you guys are doing happy and healthy today's topic what i'm going to talk about is uh, something which i'm noticing as a big trend here in india especially in the automotive journalism this is very specific to the two wheeler uh, segment that i'm observing uh, i thought like let me put in my two cents about this whole uh, mentality or approach or the way in which the reviews are happening of the bikes which i feel that are in according to me are senseless i'm i'm trying to be very bold in telling that it is senseless because there are two aspects of the reviews which i'm definitely i'm not liking and it's not that every single person is every single um, automotive journalist or the reviewers i don't know if i think i should probably segregate these two segments uh, separately one is the true genuine automo- automotive journalist and the second thing is these guys who are uh, reviewers of the bike like influencers as you can call it uh, because probably they have um, a good fan following on youtube or instagram and the uh, the bike manufacturer uh, invites them for the launch and uh, gives them the keys for that Uh, initial first ride stuff and all those things this whole thing of uh, revving the vehicles when it is given at the time of launch um, i have seen at least 2 to 3 um, journalist do it very specifically pretty senior pretty well known pretty reputed names uh, in this whole automotive uh, journalism uh, field as i can call it um i see that one of the things that they check is how fast the bike can go and this is being done on a brand new motorcycle which forget about 1000 would have even run 100 kilometers they take the bike out on a plain empty stretch they try to rev it to the max and see whether it can touch 120 140 160 or whatever doesn't the bike actually have some sort of uh, run in period and first service and settling down and all those things why do they have to test this on a brand new vehicle what happens to the vehicle and what's the future of that bike is secondary but does it really make sense for somebody who is reviewing a bike to actually go and check the top speed on a brand new vehicle brand new as in like the keys for it is just given after a launch and they try to do a top speed uh, check and these are dedicated segments in their youtube channels wherein top speed of this particular bike which is just launched and people go excited especially the viewers they get over excited by all these things but look at it from the practical point of view like is that bike really meant to be revved so hard and um, ridden at such top speed when it is well within that run in period shouldn't this be something which should be ideally checked after the first service or something like that because if you take anybody any common man actually buys a new bike the first thing that they tell you when they are giving you the keys is that run in period or don't go beyond 4000 rpm 5000 rpm like whatever depending on the bike and the capacity and all those things but there are people who are taking 250 cc bikes in the very first 1 hour and they are putting it into top speed ch- check and they are driving it at like riding it at 140 kmph or 150 kmph and trying to see what is the maximum it can go by pushing it to its limit and this is one uh, one way of approaching this the second thing is checking the top speed in a particular gear again this also is something why do you even want to try to do it on a brand new bike why can't this be done on maybe um, a long term review bike or a bike which you can which has been used for test ride for like a few days or a few weeks and after do it why do you have to do it on a brand new bike 
literally you can see the bike see and hear the bike scream okay and they check like oh first gear it goes up to 60 km per hour second gear it goes to 100 what is there to be so excited about does every single person who picks up that bike ride in that speed i don't think so even 5 or 10 percent of them do it i mean i'm not even talking about any of the sports bikes or any of the super bikes or anything like that these are commuter bikes or these are like 200 300 or cc bikes which are available for consumers here in uh, indian market they try to check the top speed in second gear third gear in a city like bangalore or probably even in mumbai do the people like even be able to go beyond first gear and even if he's in first gear do you think that in a traffic they can in traffic or otherwise within the city is it even practical for them to ride at like 40 50 kilometers per hour for more than few seconds and here there are people like who call themselves as very uh, famous or well known uh, automotive journalist who go and rev the bikes in each of the gear and try to check what is the top speed i don't know what is what is the theory behind these two things which is checking the top speed on a brand new vehicle or checking the top speed in a specific gear on a brand new vehicle isn't it spoiling the bike like okay the, the bike manufacturer would have set aside 10 20 or 30 bikes for the journalist to come and check but doing this i see that it, it looks very senseless if you actually it, it might for a viewers it might look like okay top speed wow it can go 140 and all those things but look at it from a practical perspective this is one issue that i see second issue i see is regarding comparison any bike that gets launched gets compared to something which is what we can call it as an ideal bike in the market or ideal bike in the world some bike comes with a specific uh, type of say, say like um, an adventure bike they start comparing like okay this bike does not have a proper windshield i mean you're comparing a 400 cc or a 500 cc bike to a bike which is say like a 1250 cc which has the best in the world uh, um, windshield why do you have to compare everything to what can be called as a, a market reference i don't think so like so look at what's happening in that segment okay and every bike need not be compared to see whether it is touring capable i think it has become a fad now that everyone wants to tour everyone wants to like break free and go exploring the world exploring their uh, country their state their backyards like every single person who is buying a bike is being portrayed as if like he is buying the bike for adventure purpose off roading traveling long distance and all so the moment a bike is launched these automotive journalists start adding the tag related to is it touring capable is it uh, does it have luggage carrying capacity does it have all the bikes need not be done like this maybe bikes get there are segments in bike like adventure bikes which are meant for that there are off-road bikes there are like classic bikes there are neo retro bikes like don't take a bike something like a re uh, classic 350 and tell that like okay this is not good for touring like how many people will actually buy a re 350 for touring okay and then something like um, a v storm 250 gets launched immediately it gets start compared to its uh, 650 sibling okay the windshield is small the wheels are like this it should have been um, uh, what do you call this uh, uh, tube uh, tubeless uh, uh, spoke wheels i mean you're talking about a 250 cc bike which costs you around two and a half lakh rupees on road how can we expect a, a tubeless spoke rim on such a bike okay and they say that it would have been good adventure bike if it had uh, tubeless tires and tubeless spoke wheels and things like that you try to compare a uh, expulse 400 for long distance touring it is meant to be an off road bike it's meant to be some kind of like an adventure kind of it is not a touring bike but every automotive journalist who picks up this bike for review they say like oh for long distance touring we can't go more than this speed or we can't overtake in 100 km why do you have to make everything look like it is a touring bike why do you have to make everything look like an adventure bike 
why do you have to make everything look like it is meant for traveling the world there are bikes which are there which is meant for that and there are some capable guys out there in our country who can take any bike and do such things okay give them a simple uh, splendor or give them something like a, a, a gsa 1250 they know how to use it they know how to travel the world you need not make every bike look like as if it's meant for sport touring or make it uh, uh, look like something like adventure touring and all this this habit of this journalist comparing every bike whether it is capable for uh, long distance touring or whether it is capable for adventure stuff that should stop see what category it is released under see what is its price point see what is its comparison uh, com- com- uh, uh, the bikes which are there in the same segment and then talk about it rather than making everything look like it is made for touring or adventure the last thing i see is most of the folks i'm not telling all most of the folks when it comes to this bike review they use this word review uh in the very first the the bike gets launched they are given the keys for to ride the bike for maybe one day half a day or maybe two three days or maybe say like even a week i i've seen few people who have been given bikes for about almost a week they call it a review i personally feel that you should not call it a bike review because you are riding it for like say some 2000 3000 or 5000 kilometers you are not even taking it for service you are not even talking about the service cost you are not even talking about the spares cost and so many challenges come in the bike after 5 or 10000 kilometers i'm i'm pretty sure most bikes are like this i mean i'm not talking about the top end bikes but most of the bikes start showing issue maybe it's engine oil leak issue or maybe a clutch or maybe something related to brakes or something related to the tire all these doesn't show up in that 500 1000 or 2000 kilometers that you ride so calling it a review and giving an opinion there should be some kind of like a clause telling that this is based on this much okay and a review according to me is incomplete if at all if you are not exposing yourself to the service aspect of the bike i don't think so anybody i don't think so any reviewer if they are not given a long term bike i don't think so anybody covers this aspect at all they don't cover things like service cost uh, spares availability and all those things all that they do is this stop speed check uh, seat check and um, off road check accessories whether they are available for touring and only such thing they talk about okay whether you need to have a handlebar raisers just take a random bike and tell that you need to put handlebar raisers so that it's comfortable for touring and like <laughs> i don't even understand why you have to review it in this aspect rather than look at it from practical perspective um, i i saw that uh, i mean in one of the blogs it was mentioned that hero honda splendor uh, is continues to be one of the top selling um, two wheelers consumer uh, two wheeler in in indian market i really wish if some or all of this um, automotive journalist are given keys to a brand new version of uh, hero honda splendor hero splendor sorry and um, i wonder what they say like okay this has alloy wheels this is not meant for off road oh this is uh, this is not having enough uh, cc this is not having enough torque uh this does not have slipper clutch or this does not have a um, quick shifter or auto blipper i'm pretty sure they'll review it like that only okay and they'll start talking about adding handlebar raisers and saddle stays for a hero splendor <laughs> rather look at it from why do people even buy a specific bike need a splendor itself it's a commuter bike and not for everyone who can go beyond that 1 lakh or 1 and a half lakh budget are the ones who buy okay and that's the same case with even something like a neo retro bike not everyone who is buying a neo retro bike wants to use it for off road purpose why do you want to test the off roading capability of a, a java 42 why do you want to check the off roading capability of something like a re classic 350 or even for that matter the new tvs run in people are telling you okay it looks like scrambler it looks like classic and it looks like this it looks like that it is not meant for touring it is not meant for off roading you have to change this you have to change that 
why why do you have to review it in that perspective review the bike as it is so what is good in it what is bad in it if you have it for longer term then review it with the aspect of service service cost and service spare cost and all those things so these were the three things which i felt was the way it is being done in the current automotive industry is senseless and i thought i'll express it out i don't know what people feel about it each one has their own perspective and i'm pretty sure um, even though there are uh, hundreds and thousands of millions of followers or most most of this automotive journalists and uh, maybe 90 to 95% of them even not even bother about buying any of this bike but the comment section is always filled with oh you should compare this bike with that bike or do you think this is good for adventure or do you think this is good for long touring long distance touring and all those stuff so to at least to entertain those 95% of the people you know, who are their subscribers or viewers or whatever these guys do it i guess like this but i i don't see any reason so i typically whenever a new bike is launched i just pick up one like whatever comes up first on my youtube channel i just click on that one i just get to hear about the specs because end of the day most if not for all of them are talking about the same specs same seat same tire same things they'll talk about they'll not talk anything different or they'll not talk anything unique which is something which needs to be corrected um and i don't know and if you compare it with what happens in western world like any look at any uh, bike reviews that happen in us or bike reviews that happen in europe i don't think so they do any of such things forget about the service aspect i do see that quite a few um automotive journalists from uh, us they touch upon the aspect of service cost and all but many of the indian guys they never bother to do it because for them they have to make a quick 5 to 10 minutes video about the bike uh, because if you don't do it immediately and if you don't talk about whether it's capable of doing everything then the youtube algorithm will not be favoring them <laughs> that's the reason why so i thought i'll just quickly talk about this and express my thoughts uh, if you are someone who feels the same please do comment below and let me know uh, your perspective as well or what do you see things being done which is senseless which needs to be corrected not that we are going out and correcting them but at least i want to hear um, what really is your thoughts about this and these three things it it could be as simple as uh, checking the stop speed or comparing the bike with whatever is the best in the market or for that matter not reviewing the bike keeping the end to end things into picture i just had this thought in my mind since several months or several years today i felt like talking about it but i think i spoke way too much okay that's it for now thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye bye matte se gana